Hello everybody and welcome to this week's podcast. I'm your host Mark Gallagher. Uh, this week uh, we are talking all uh, about getting hard. Uh, don't worry, you haven't uh, accidentally flicked on a podcast for uh, porn or amateur karma sutra. Uh, don't worry, it's uh, getting hard in the sense of how do you get yourself pumped up and ready to go to to war with yourself, with a challenge, with a goal. Uh, I'll give you a bit of background as to why I'm talking about this this week because this um, resonates or this is what um, has cheesed me off uh, this week with myself. For anybody who doesn't follow my podcast or my, my blog, Modern Man, Modern Expectations, um, you won't know that this year I have gone down the rabbit hole uh, deep into ultra uh, running. Um, last year I took on a series of challenges, uh, done my first marathon, done my first triathlon, then tackled a couple of half Ironman distance and a full Ironman distance uh, triathlon uh, and got through it. I'm still in one piece. Uh, I really had no reason to, to do it, but I got hard and I went and I got it done. Um, this year, I'm starting from a far better place, you know, far fitter, far stronger. Um, after the triathlon, there was like this post-race blues, you know, you go from working towards this thing, you know, really putting in super amount of effort, um, you know, striving for a goal, to not having anything physical to be working towards. And I was, I was starting to, to get annoyed with myself. Um, I needed something. And I know that for me to be me and, and to be on top of things, I need a goal. It's as simple as that. I need a goal and need to push myself, can't stay. Uh, still I can't stay in the same place and need to move forward so this year the plan is um, never ran an ultra well never ran an official ultra um, before I've got lost plenty of times at races and uh, I've done more than the, the allocated uh, distance in a race I suppose you could count it as an unofficial ultra uh, the first marathon I've done was the 2019 Belfast City Marathon uh, and everybody done an ultra that day it was all over um, it was all over the the 26.2 miles um, but everybody had a bit of crack uh, but yes this year the three goals are uh, well there's more goals there's sub goals off these goals but the three physical challenges are a back-to-back -back marathon so going back to the Belfast City Marathon this year the plan being to run uh, the official marathon get to that finish line go and do another one um, so 52 point, uh, 52.4 uh, miles is the, the plan um, for that. Followed by, and that's in May, followed by in June, the Atlas um, 24-hour uh, endurance race. Uh, it's a one-mile track, and you have 24 hours to run around that track uh, as many times as you wish. Um, so I've goal set there um, for that and, and that's going to be a massive, massive, massive mental, physical challenge for me. Uh, and the big one this year, um, which I'll be honest with you, it has consumed my thoughts. It's consumed uh, everything about me. I'm just, I'm fascinated by this race and I'm, I'm, I'm obsessive about this race. It's the Connemara 100. It's 100 mile foot race um through Connemara uh, on the west coast of Ireland probably one of the most beautiful places in the world uh, which is exciting in itself but this is going to be a massive challenge um Ironman was huge uh, a different type of challenge you know I needed to get used to swimming I needed to get used to bike and running um, I'm amalgamate them all together this is going to be a different type of torture this is all the one thing this is my legs churning for 100 miles, um, my body is going to be aching, my mind is going to be doubting itself. I just have to get as prepared as I can. So the past while, the past two or three months, uh, really two months, 
um, really focused on it, I have been training for it. I've been building up the miles uh, and I'm now at a point where I really need to, to get things moving and the really sort of put the head down and get stuck in and this week has been a rest week and rest week for good reason because last week was big heavy miles uh, it was 50 mile week um, which in the grand scheme of things isn't going to be much but I haven't done many 50 mile weeks running um, before um, so this week was a rest week um, and I'm kicking myself because I did I have, I've only done the miles that I was supposed to do I do feel well rested, but I feel so well rested that I really took my foot off the, the gas uh, and I treated it as a holiday rather than still being focused towards the goal. So I'm, I'm a bit cheesed off and, and by that I'm not being unreasonable or, or, or ridiculous. It's been a case of I've moved things about in the schedule. You know, what, a, what I sort of preach here or what I'm talking about, I haven't really been practicing this week. It, it's just been a mind fart of a week. Um, and it's really, really got to me. It's really cheesed me off. Um, for example, uh, Wednesday, I was supposed to do a run in the morning and do a run in the evening. Done the run in the morning, evening, was feeling tired. There was nobody else going and doing it. But rather than digging deep and just going and doing that run, um, you know, I did uh, sit back, done something else. Um, and I knew at the time it was going to eat at me. And, and it has. It's ate at me all week. Now, I've made the miles up throughout the week. But it was just the more, not so much the physical, but the mental side of that is that, you know, you, you procrastinated, you put things off, or I put things off, has really annoyed me. Um, so yeah, there was that. I had also um, scheduled for a lot of mobility stuff, you know, to do a lot of stretching, a lot of core exercise, to which little to none of it has been done. Um, and again, I am supposed to be accountable for everything. Uh, and this week has definitely been taking my foot off the gas. And yeah, I if you can't tell by the tone of my voice, I am miffed. Um, not best pleased with myself. So what do you do to change it um or how do i go about changing or what is my plan um to change it and really have you i've done this before um prior to endurance sports i was I, I did taekwondo uh i did it to a an elite level i would play it on a, and or competed uh, on a national team and was very uh up and coming i had few good titles under my, um, my belt and yeah things were, were going well for me I was really really starting to make a name um, for myself and that and I used tools um, for, for going for events that were above me uh, and I knew that I really really needed to dig deep from somewhere um, to, to, to get to the goal and I always called that getting hard so this week I need to <laughs> I need to get hard I need to get rock solid mentally physically uh, I need to um, I need I needed to get hard so what does that look like or what do I need to do um, some of this might actually even sound a bit cliche and some of this might actually sound um, like I'm, I'm robbing it from other places but this is actually stuff that I have done for years maybe not to the extent of others but um the first thing i do because it annoys me it gets under my skin and and it eats away at me because you can't fool yourself you know if, if, if you've tried to fool yourself you know there's always that wee nagging voice in your head going you have wimped out you're you're you're, you're not firing all cylinders here so i look at myself in the mirror and i do get super super real with myself now at this moment in time i am physically fit have to say I'm physically physically fit but I am not um, I am not rock solid I'm not a machine at this moment in time and I know that and I can say that uh, hand on heart um, but I looked at myself in the mirror and said right you can run a marathon comfortably with ease you know it doesn't cause you any discomfort to run a marathon uh, at this moment in time so therefore you're you're fit you're physically fit you've got base fitness there um, 
but I looked at myself, you know, soft underbelly, um, you know, carrying a bit more weight than what it should be. I'm just not optimal. Um, so what needs to be done about it? I need to get real with it. You know, I need to lose weight. Uh, I need to tighten up. I need to get stronger. I need to feel on top form. I need to feel rock solid uh, as well. So this week, the plan is just to sicken myself. Um, there's an extra 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups thrown into every single day uh, this week just because I took my foot off the gas last week. I have to punish myself in some way uh, or hold myself accountable for um, for the week. So that's this week, you know, bigger mileage this week. It's a 52 mile week um, and every day there's that little bit extra that needs to be done and I have to do them. There is no room for... I'll put them off and do more double the next day or do this. Every single day, they have to be done. Has to be done. Um, so there's that. This week as well, I can tell you, hand on heart, I have ate rubbish. Um, there's been too many snack bars, you know, which look on the surface, look okay and look fine. Um, but when you dig through that, what that means is I haven't put in the preparation to have enough uh proper nutrients and proper uh food and fuel there for myself so um it's laziness boils down the laziness that i've been lazy this week so what i need to do this week is i need to have um food in place there's no there's no way this works if i'm not feeding myself full of good stuff so this week i have to get super real with myself and the, the, the almost forfeit or the punishment is if I don't prepare it and if I don't bring it with me, I don't eat. You know, there's no, um, you know, so that's a double, that's a double kicker. Uh, I suppose if you're too lazy to do it, then starve uh, is pretty much the way of it. And this is, this sounds ridiculous, but this is almost a place that I know. And this, nobody might even agree with me, but for me, this is what I need. I know I need to do to get a big boot up my backside to get me into gear. Um, I can be a lazy kid, uh, and this is the the, the kick in the backside, a uh, big kick in the backside that I I need. Um, so yeah, if I don't cook it, if I don't bring it to work with me, if it's not prepared, I don't eat. Don't eat it. Don't go out and buy anything. There's no room for fast food, quick fix. Has to be thought put into me becoming bigger, better, stronger, faster, more endurance, more stamina, more speed, more hardness. Um, so what I'm putting into myself uh, has to be a conscious thought. So there's this week, um, there's the extra physical demand, there's the mental demand of, you know, I am totally um, accountable. This week as well, another um, part of getting hard, uh, you know, getting uh, getting to beyond a, a point or, or, or making myself feel that bit more solid um, and that bit more tough is um, in training, I haven't broke the marathon distance yet. We've trained up to the marathon distance, um, but I haven't broke it. So this week, guess what? We're breaking it. Um, it's a heavy week of running, it's a heavy week of work, it's a heavy week of exercise, but let's just get it done. It's not much over the, the marathon distance, it's 27 miles is the long run this week. Um, but the hell with it, you know, I'm going to do a 100 mile race, have to break it sometime, so well, might as well do it now. Um, so that is the, the plan um, for that. So pretty much I have the extra physical demand, I have the extra distance to be doing, I have the conscious thought of what's going into my body. Um, the other thing that I have set for myself to do, um, partly because I have heard it out there, um, it's not just me torturing myself for the sake of torturing myself, there is actual method um, to the madness. Um, and it seems to be a tried and tested thing, is to try and stay on my feet for as long as possible. Um, people talk about ultra run. When you think about an ultra race, the race that I will be taking part in, it's a 100 mile foot race. So there's that, there's a 100 miles 
or off your own steam to contend with. And no matter what way you slice that, that is a hell of a long time to be on your feet. Um, this race has a 30 hour limit. Um, I would hope to God that I am not doing it for 30 minutes. I hope to be finished long before then. But worse comes to worst and I have a bad day at the office, I need to be prepared to be on my feet for 30 hours. Um, so in my job, I sell cars. I have a desk um, and I need to be there for a lot of stuff to be done. So what I'm going to do this week is try and make that bit more effort to get all the paperwork and nonsense and all the the necessary stuff that needs done out of the way super early therefore it could only be a good thing for me in my profession i'm on my feet i'm able to talk to more customers i'm able to do this i'm more active um but at the same turn of the coin it's helped me i'm staying on my feet for longer so i'm hoping that when it gets to the race you know being on my feet it's it's a it's a default it's not really a worry i don't need to uh i don't need to worry about you know oh my feet are burning because i've been on my feet for 12 hours you know pff, who cares that's just normal these days you know get on with it you know get on with it, you know stop standing start running you know that that's the type of um uh, mentality and the type of attitude um that i need so yeah, as you can tell, this week I have, um, I've took my foot off the gas and I, the thing is, while it was happening, there was always that little, you know, um, there was the angel and the devil on my shoulder and one saying, you know, you need to go do this, Mark, you need to go do this, and the other one saying, oh, relax, you've earned it, you know, and, and I listened to that and I wish to God I hadn't because um, it's really, really, really um, pissed me off. And not only that, this is... This is a huge challenge, you know, for anybody. Um, saying it out loud, it sounds mental. Go and run 100 miles. Um, it's a huge physical feat. You know, it's a huge physical feat. Um, I just need to be hard to do this. You know, I need to be hard. You know, I know there is going to be times during this race where I will be questioning why on earth did I sign myself up for it? You know, what possessed you to do a 100 mile race? You've only really been running for about a year, two years. Um, what makes you think you can go and, and do a 100 mile race? So there, there's that, you know, there's that, that's gonna be playing in, my, in the back of my head and I need to have rock solid, hard, um, mental toughness to fall back on whenever I am, uh, I am up against it you know <laughs> yeah I need to be hard as nails to go into this thing um so there's that so I mean that's what I'm saying every week I need to be getting tougher and tougher and tougher that doesn't mean I need to be I don't know walking in their room and smashing everybody's coffee cup and, and you know turning into the Hulk that's no one's gonna get on with me if that's the case you know that I'll not get far in life if that if that's the case but just in general you know not taking the easy way out of anything. I'll, get, I'll give you an example. Um, before I mentioned um, I'd done Taekwondo and the biggest competition um, that I had to do was the Commonwealth um, Games in Australia. And I hadn't really done a competition of that magnitude or that size um, and of that quality before. It was a huge step up for for me and you know i was a, a big fish in a little pond and i was uh, i was good at what i'd done but on a world-class international stage um it really you know I, I was unknown no no one knew me you know i was just who's that guy you know whatever um and i knew that there was that that was that thought in my head you know so pretty much we got a plan together um, we got new coaches involved. I was part of the coaching as well. Um, and you know, there was, there was a big plan put in place. There was that going on, but I knew I needed something extra. I needed to be obsessed with the whole thing. So pretty much what I did was, uh, I was living in my mum and dad's house at the time. I put up a huge big punch bag in the center of the garage. I found this like carpet 
uh, flooring, you know, it's on in hindsight, you know, it must have cut the feet clean off me, but it built toughness. Um, so I would be doing two sessions a day uh, with that, plus strength and conditioning, plus stretching, plus technique work. You know, it was a full time job um, training for the Commonwealth. Um, it was a full time job and I knew it was it was above me and, and beyond me. So pretty much how I got hard, how I developed myself to be tougher um, was I, I, that old that old um, thing you hear everywhere, you know, be the first there and be the last to leave. Uh, I was obsessed by training. I was there half hour before everybody. I was stretched. I was working on technique. I was, you know, mentally in my head going through scenarios. I was going through um, worst case scenarios, best case scenarios. Um, you name it. I was conjuring up all these ideas in my head and I had to have a solution for them. At training, I can honestly tell you that I put my heart and soul into every single session. Now it's different, it was different, you know, uh, with endurance racing, you can't go hell for leather um, on a on a big, big, a big long run. Because if you go hell for leather at one part, you're just totally destroying yourself and you don't have the energy. And there, there's, there's, there's a, scientific reason why you shouldn't do that you know your, your body just won't cope with you know your anaerobic system and your aerobic system they'll just not work together to get you to 100 miles it just won't won't happen so you there, there needs to be a plan in place but for me with taekwondo with being a, such an explosive um sport i was on fire every single time you know i had big big problems with my feet all through my career broke them multiple times um but they were strapped up, you know, if, if they were sore, I just had to grin and bear it. You know, there was times I knew I was going to training and I knew that my toes were broken or part of my foot was broken. Uh, and part of the plan was just to numb it up, numb it up, cover it up in shoes, pads, whatever, just to keep me there, you know. And part of that was, you know, that bit in your head where you go, um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here and I know things are broken, but I'm still here and I'm still fighting. Um, at home, like I say, I had the the punch bag set up, so I was doing all these sessions, you know, every day. But every day was then back home. It was just working on stuff, you know, on that car journey home, um, where I was doing a recall of everything, going, you know, that could have been better, that could have been better, that could have been better. That was the stuff then that I worked on in the garage. You know, it was ridiculous. You know. A more mental, this is actual, I think, lunacy. Uh, and my wife still slags me about this uh, to this day. But I was never, ever, ever supposed to be the weight I was for Taekwondo. I fought at minus 62 kilos. And generally, I walked about the place at 69, 70 kilos. So I was never, ever really supposed to fight at minus 62. But for the height of me and the build of me, that's what suited it. If anything, I was still on the cusp of being too short um, for that division. But um i needed to lose weight i needed to maintain weight um but food had such a big draw um at the very start of the process that i needed to make it an enemy uh, and i needed to have control over it so this is how mental my mind got i used to go into my mum and dad's fridge i used to open the fridge I was hungry. I, I was hungry, you know, I, I was working off sort of calorie deficiency, you know, um, putting out so much and taking in less calories and bound to lose weight. That was my thought. It was as simple and straightforward uh, as that. Um, but I went to war uh, with calories and with food. I was opening the fridge and I was literally uh, looking at stuff uh, to anybody else. It just looked like Mark was in the days looking at food. Um, he, he's obsessive over over food but in my head i was there going you know you don't have control over me you don't you, you i don't need you um you know i'm gonna lose this weight it was almost like a mantra in my head lock me up now but i don't care that was the type of strength that i needed uh to get the weight off and to to get myself into shape um 
so yeah i do know there is lots of tools um to to do it and maybe mine are a bit less out there more out there weirder wackier than than anybody else's but this week the the real truth of it is um is that i am going to war with myself um yeah this week lazy mark is gonna get his bollocks knocked in because the mental mark uh has turning up this week and we are getting hard we are going after it we are going to uh, get mentally tough physically tough i know going into it it's going to be i'm going to be shattered i'm going to be tired i know i'm going to be in bad twist in certain parts of it but the hell with it that's the way it has to be uh, i need to get tough uh with it so yeah um like i say call the fellas with the the white jackets and and put me in one of them straight ones uh if needs be but this week is um it's about toughness uh have to have to do it um so i'll keep you posted on how that goes um and the same way if anybody i have had no i haven't had as much as what i would love um but then again we're building up this podcast and it seems to be week on week we're gaining traction and more traction with it uh, i would love more interaction you know if you have um your your own way your own process of getting you mentally physically prepared for uh, a big task big meeting big interview big physical challenge um big um milestone in your life let us know um i can only feel like i say my my love for this podcast is telling stories i love telling stories i love hearing them i love feeding from them i love getting the energy from them and that's what this is all about you know the running and the, and the, the endurance and the, the everything else that goes along with it um really and truly it's all just so that i have an, a cracking story and uh, to tell and i can hear stories because it's one of the best places to get them i think um and it's the best place to get what the ones that i love so um if there's anything you have um there that, that that you think could be useful and here mark have this wee nugget of wisdom please 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 get in touch um it's a big community uh out there um i'd love to make it bigger and bigger and bigger um and have everybody having a bit of crack and a bit of fun with it and just you know speaking the truth um you know it, it, to me, even doing this a year ago and telling people that I used to look in a fridge at food and go to war with food, um, that sounded, uh, that was too scary um, to do. Um, whereas now, it's a story to tell. It's made me a better person. Uh, it's made me stronger. It's given me a cracking story to tell. And that's what all this is about. So, Mark Gallagher, 2nd of February, cheesed off himself monday morning third of february going to war with myself going to war with the miles getting hard getting physically mentally tough uh wish me luck it's been an absolute pleasure um talking to you again uh, and we'll let you know how we get on next week hopefully in a better place hopefully ready to climb mountains and wrestle bears uh, and take over the world but listen thanks again all the best cheerio